Hi everyone, it is just after lunch and I would like to do a reading vlog today. I am going to be showing you some Halloween baking that I did at the weekend and then I want to talk to you about 10 books that I'm going to be sampling this afternoon. So I want to fit the books that I'm reading with the theme of the baking that I did at the weekend um, and I'm going to read 10 scary books but what I'm doing is I've picked books off my shelves that kind of fall into or at least I'm guessing they fall into given that I haven't read them yet they fall into different categories of scary because I know that some of us like to read unsettling things but some of us might like to read horror and you know some of us want to read all of those things so I'd like to kind of recommend lots of different books to you depending on where your scare threshold is so what I've done is I have gone through my short story collection shelves and I've picked out 10 books. Some of those books are self-described as horror stories and some of them are more black mirror, psychological, get under your skin, dystopian type stories and some of them I think are going to be more, maybe not cute, but towards the magic, witchy, fairy tale side of happy Halloween. I've actually been doing other baking this morning and if you can kind of see, maybe you can see, my hands are still dyed a little bit. I decided to make rainbow bagels. I don't know if you're watching Great British Bake Off at the moment, but they made rainbow bagels the other week and I really enjoy making bagels. I have done a video on here where I make bagels, which I'll link in the description box down below. And I thought, oh, it'd be really fun to do rainbow bagels and it is fun, but it is messy um, and I will put some... Uh, photos on the screen so you can see what they look like. I was really happy with the way they turned out actually so if you would like me to make rainbow bagels in another reading vlog at some point let me know and I will do that. But this weekend I decided that I would make some Halloween treats. I've been playing around making lemon meringue pie and then I made this ridiculous rainbow pavlova. I'll put a picture of it on the screen and I actually did a video where I made that too. So I thought what if I made ghost meringues um because that seems like it should be quite straightforward so i've bought a felt tip pen that you can use on food so edible ink that i can draw ghost eyes and mouths on meringues so i thought i would do half ghost meringues and then the other half of the meringue mixture i thought i would um use food dye to turn that orange <laughs> for some reason i forgot the color there for a second uh and i would make the other half into pumpkins and then use green food dye to put little stalks on the top. So that was my plan with regard to meringues. And then I thought I would make some cookies. The best cookie recipe that I've come across is one that the Anna Edit did. She was trying to recreate creme cookies. Creme is a small, uh, well, it's not even a bakery, a cookery in Soho in London. And they do really fantastic cookies. So she... She did God's work and she did lots of experimenting in her kitchen uh, and came up with this recipe which is fantastic and I will link it in the description box down below. I love them. And what's really great about her cookie recipe is that you make the cookies but then you freeze them. So you can make a whole batch and then you just take them out of the freezer whenever you need to cook them. Because if you put them in the freezer, it means that when you put them in the oven, the chocolate melts slower, so they're really gooey in the middle. I will say, I don't know if she's put this on her website, she may have done, if you don't use them the same day that you freeze them, when you go to take them out of the freezer, maybe keep them on the side for half an hour before you put them in the oven, just so that they're not frozen solid, but otherwise, just amazing. Now, I know that cookies are not scary, so I thought what I would do <laughs> is snap them in two and put one on top of the other and then get those tiny little marshmallows that you can get. Um, M&S do the little pink and white ones. So pick out all the white ones and put a row of white marshmallows in between the two cookies so that it looks like a mouth. That is my plan, or I should say that was my plan. I have actually already done the baking. I did it at the weekend. So today I wanna read those 10 books, read samples of them, read the beginning of them all, and then in between me talking about them, I'm gonna insert footage from the baking at the weekend. Let me go grab the 10 books that I'm gonna be reading today so that I can tell you all of the titles and then we can settle down to baking and reading. 
Okay, so these are the 10 books that I'm gonna be reading from today. The first one is Tuck To Me, which is a collection of Arctic horror stories. This is Where the Wild Ladies Are by Matsuda Aoko, translated from the Japanese by Polly Barton. This is a collection of traditional Japanese ghost stories, but retold with a feminist slant. This is Flowers of Mold by Ha Seong Nan, and this is translated from the Korean by Janet Hong. We have this one, this is a proof cover. The finished cover is really stunning. I'll insert it here. This is You Will Never Be Forgotten by Mary South. I'm not sure how scary this one is. I think not so scary. So I will rank them in order of scariness towards the end maybe. So this is On a Dark Night with Enough Wind by Lila Pennant. And this one is about Welsh folklore. This is an anthology called Hag, and it has stories in it by Kirstie Logan, Arenison Okaji, Emma Glass, Ema McBride. This is Forgotten Folklore. Then we have The Wilds by Julia Elliott, which has been sitting on my shelves for so long. This edition is published by Tin House. I love their covers. Then we have a magazine. This is a magazine called Cunning Folk that I bought recently. It is um, magic, mythology, folklore, and the occult. This is the re-enchantment issue. It has beautiful illustrations inside as well. I'm really looking forward to diving into this one. And then two more anthologies. This is the Decameron Project, 29 new stories from the pandemic. This I mentioned in my most recent haul, and I said I was a bit anxious about it because I don't really want to read about pandemics right now. But this is a collection of stories that authors have written during COVID-19. Some of them are to do with the pandemic, but some of them are just stories that they wrote to distract themselves. I do think a lot of them have a very dark edge, which is not surprising if we're writing at the moment. And not writing at the moment is this anthology called Weird Women, classic supernatural fiction by groundbreaking female writers from 1852 to 1923. So we have quite um, a range of books here and I'm gonna make my way through them today. Not all, all the way through each of them, obviously, but sampling, all of them, telling you what I think about them, first impressions, how scary are they, what kind of audience would I recommend, um, and yeah, that is the plan. Also, as well as recommending other people's books today, I did want to say that if you haven't read my short story collection, The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night, and you're looking for a creepy read this autumn winter, then may I recommend it. I will insert the cover of it here. It's published by Hachette. It is 12 haunting stories. One of them is about a world where people buy animal hearts online and they put them inside their bodies. One is about a world where people breed ghosts accidentally inside themselves and then they hiccup them out into the world. One of the stories is about a camp for teenagers who have plants growing out of their bodies. It is a collection that explores fairy tale and um, control and disfigurement and the stories that we tell ourselves. It's about disability, it's about the history of the freak show, it's about lots of different things and I would love it if you would like to check that out. I have uploaded a video where I read the first story in the collection so if you would like a sample story before purchasing I will link that video in the description box down below as well. So firstly before I start doing any reading let me show you the result of the meringue Halloween baking that I did at the weekend. If you're making meringues use a ratio of one egg white to 50 grams of caster sugar and a half tablespoon of corn flour. So you wanna put however many egg whites you're using in a big bowl, a clean bowl, no eggshells anywhere. Use a hand whisk to whisk that together till you've got stiff white peaks and then continue whisking as you add in the sugar and the corn flour very gradually. So like one teaspoon at a time. And then I bake them for about 40 minutes on 100 degrees and this is how they turned out.
okay I've read the beginning of the first five books let me do this maybe in enjoyment order the one that I enjoyed least was the one that I read from the Decameron project and it wasn't because the story was badly written or anything like that it was because the first story was set during the pandemic that we are currently in and it is called uh, Recognition by Victor Laval and it's set in an apartment block in New York and it's about a janitor who is going around and marking the apartments of people who are no longer there and the two people who are still there who haven't gone back to families who um, haven't ended up in hospital who haven't died um, they start communicating with each other I, do, I just I don't know it's, it feels too soon to me um, I don't know anyway but I did start reading the second story in this which is about a woman who goes to get um, a facial and some beauty treatments done and they say would you like to have another one of our age reduction treatments which is the removal of traumatic memories because that will make you more youthful and she decides that she's going to go for that and I was definitely more drawn to that one purely because of the subject matter just a personal thing so um that was one of the ones that I read then I read the beginning of Tuck To Me the first one is a horror story about a blizzard and all of the children are sent home from school and they know their way home so they go there together and then they split right at the end of this path and they each go to their individual houses but the narrator of this story feels as though something is following him home and then when he gets into his house he thinks maybe it already got into his house and it is very creepy it's your typical horror you know don't look round the corner don't turn your back on anything kind of story I think I would love that particular one to be illustrated I think that that would be really really wonderful it was quite short it wasn't too scary it definitely gave me a tingle right at the end though I really enjoyed that and then I read the first story in where the wild ladies are by Matsuko Aoko this one was very slow I would like to it to have been a bit more fast paced um, but I am intrigued by this book it's about a man who has um, been off work for six months he's a salesman and he's at home all day and his wife is trying to persuade him to try and find another job and she's gone out for work for the day and he's sitting there and then these two saleswomen ring the doorbell of his flat so he goes to let them in he doesn't want to but then he blinks and suddenly they're in his living room and he can't remember inviting them in and there's tea on the table but he can't remember making them tea and they're trying to sell him some lanterns and he's finding it really amusing because he remembers all of the sales tactics that he used to use when he was a salesman but then they start to turn really nasty and say you know if you don't buy what we're selling you, we will shame you, we will destroy you, and it just gets really, really dark. I like this one, I didn't love it though. I would say it's probably in the middle of the books um, that I read in this, in this round. And my two favorites were the stories that I read in Cunning Folk. So Cunning Folk is the one that I said is a magazine. So there's some poetry in here, some non-fiction articles, and all of it is illustrated. I mean, look at this illustration of making tea it's called moon cycle tea this whole issue is about like the rewilding of self and how to believe in magic again um and the story that i read is called the wild hunt and it's by zoe gilbert um who wrote the book folk which i didn't love but i love her writing i just didn't love that book as, as a whole i didn't feel it came together um and the story in here is about a man who really fancies a girl in town and he wants to prove that he's worthy of her love so he hears that there is a hunt that goes on at night an endless hunt these ghosts can't get off their horses because if they do they will turn to dust so he goes to find the hunt because he wants to take a hair from one of their horses and take it back to this girl but things don't really go according to plan it was really atmospheric I really enjoyed that. My favourite though was the first story in You Will Never Be Forgotten by Mary South and the first one is called Keith Prime and it's about a world where people harvest organs from in this case 
a group of men who they have manufactured called the Keiths. Um, there are different factories that produce different kinds of people and the woman who's looking after the Keiths or one of the women who's looking after the Keiths becomes quite attached to one of the unconscious Keiths and she unwittingly wakes him up and makes him conscious and she has to take him home. I thought that it was really eerie. I thought it was really well balanced. Um, it reminded me a lot of, you know, the feeling that I get when reading Never Let Me Go. It's not horror, horror, but it is deeply unsettling and I'm really excited to read the rest of this book. Out of these five, I would say probably the scariest is Tuck To Me because as I said, it is a traditional horror story. And then the least scary overall is probably Cunning Folk because as I said, it is more about herbs and remedies and finding magic within folklore and the properties of plants and I find that kind of thing really intriguing though it does have spooky things in here too. I'm going to go ahead and read the beginning of the other five books and in the meantime I'm going to show you the footage of me making the cookies. Um, as I said I used the Anna Edit cookie but then I had the idea to split them in half, put marshmallows in to turn them into mouths so I will leave that footage here. Oh, we are battling with the dark light already this autumn. I have finished reading the beginning of the other five books. And I think probably the one that I enjoyed the least but still enjoyed is the story that I read in Weird Women. I decided to read Louisa May Alcott's story. She is the author of Little Women. And this made me giggle because it's about a woman called Evelyn who's listening to her fiance telling her about the escapades he had when he got lost in a pyramid in Egypt and he brought back these seeds that he'd found inside the tomb of a mummy. And I can't think of Egypt and mummies and Evelyn without thinking of Rachel Weiss in The Mummy, like also known as one of my earliest crushes ever. Um, so in this, she is entranced with these seeds that he has found and he says, don't plant them because there's a curse on them. But of course, who's not going to plant the mummy seeds, you know? So I enjoyed it, um, but it wasn't that scary. It was just, um, it reminded me of the weird woods story. I mean, weird women, weird woods anthology that I read um, the other week, which was more camp, old fashioned horror story fun but not terrifying. I enjoyed it. Then I read the beginning of this, which is Lila Pennant's On a Dark Night with Enough Wind. This is a non-fiction book where she's talking about the old folk stories of the Welsh village where she grew up. So the beginning is kind of setting the scene and I really liked it. The way that she's talking about the locals is great. Um, it was John who first made me curious about the abandoned houses. He allowed us to stop and explore the tiny stone build cottages, but he would never tell us about the people who would live there. If we asked, he would smile and then burst out laughing, but he wouldn't say why. His laughter was rich with some secret joke. 
at one small single story cottage called Bryn Keredig that was still occupied by his aunt, he could never help but giggle. It worked on my childish imagination. So none of this um, was scary, I guess, eerie in the sense that there are, there are some stories that aren't being told and you're not sure what the secrets of this community was. One thing that did annoy me about this though is towards the end of the introduction, she's talking about Trevor Jones Bluebell, which is the best name ever. He's a builder who's helping her restore an old building. Um, and he starts telling her old tales and it says, Trevor had a birthmark larger than any I had ever seen. It ran all the way from his forehead to his chin, but his elfin-like love of a good story made it vanish from the thoughts of any onlooker. And mm, I know that that's trying to be nice. It's saying, oh, well, I spoke with him and then I didn't even notice the birthmark on his face. But I really, really do not like that narrative. And people say it to me often, you know, I don't notice your disfigurement. I just notice the nice things that you're saying or something like that. And I find it, it's really dismissive. It's saying, I like you in spite of those things or I'm seeing past those things instead of just accepting you for who you are as a person because people's disfigurements and the way that they look and disabilities they're not something that should be banished by better parts of their personality like it's just part of who we are so I really have a great pushback against language like that um also something it's really unfortunate that I love I love creepy stories they're my thing but it also means that when I read stories I'm so often let down there's such a use of disfigurement and villainy which I've spoken about in lots of videos on here and if you missed those videos I'll link them in the description box down below. It's difficult to escape, it's a trope that's been around for so long and I find really upsetting. <laughs> um, it's a shame really that this is my favourite genre because some stories I absolutely love and then I'm gonna get really annoyed at some of them and in fact some of the creepy stories that I've read outside of this video that I'm doing, some of the books I've read this month have definitely fallen into that territory and I'll talk about those in my wrap up at the end of the month. Um, then I read Flowers of Mould. Um, I read, which story did I read in here? Was it the first one? Yes, Wax and Wings. And it's about a young girl who really wants to be able to fly. And the first time she feels this is when she's on a swing and she does that thing that we all do where you swing and then you jump off and you have that moment where you hang in the air. So she really wants to fly and she does lots of different things in her childhood to try and make that happen. She's fascinated with the mathematics of it, the science. Um, she wants to be a gymnast. Like It's really, really lovely. And then it jumps forward in her life as well and knits together these different versions or different meanings of the word to fly. And I won't go further than that because it will spoil the story. I really like the linking imagery. This one wasn't creepy. I suppose there were a few moments of peril in it, but I know that some of the other stories in this collection are creepy, or at least they appear to be from the blurb. Then I read The Wilds by Julia Elliott. I decided to read the title story and it really reminded me of Peter Pan. So it's about a girl who's fascinated with the wild boys who live in the house next door to her. There are so many children, they only have sons, and she likes to spy on them. And then one day they see her spying and they drag her to her tree house and they look at all of the things that she has collected. So she has a bottle of perfume that her mum had, which she's taken, which is called poison. And they think it is poison just the name of the perfume so they try and make her eat it um i really love the language in here it is so rich it reminds me of um karen russell's writing i'll read you the beginning the wild family moved into the house behind ours for two years the split level had been dead open to prowling neighborhood children its sunken den had become a nest of slugs and millipedes its attic a froth of bats now eight brothers flung their restless bodies around the property the largest wild, a bearded boy of 17, shut himself up in the basement den. The littlest wild, a tangle of half-haired, half-naked thing, rumoured to be a biter, lurked around in the shrubbery. The wilds kept cats, lizards and ferrets, rabbits, hamsters, turtles and snakes. A bubble of musky, amniotic air enveloped around their home like a force field, and the second you dared step through it you felt dizzy, 
a hundred arrows whistled through your ears. There is a part of this story that talks about um, bodily difference and links that with horror, but it's really specific. And it's not to do with um, disability, it's to do with puberty. And if anything is monstrous, is it not puberty? <laughs> so um, one of the boys, he, um, at full moon, he turns into a wolf man. He calls himself a wolf man. He wants to be a wolf man. Um, but the thing that is different about him is not that he is part wolf, it's that his acne is stronger at full moon. And the protagonist in this, she is called Cyclop Breasts by the boy who wears the wolf mask because she has one nipple that's bigger than the other one. So they feel monstrous within their own skin, but it's not because of, of disfigurement, it's because their bodies are changing and they don't know what they're going to be when they grow up and at that really awkward stage of growing into themselves. Um, so I completely acknowledge that uh, quite often in fiction acne can be used as a marker for villainy. Um, I don't feel like that's what this particular story is doing. It's, it's talking about insecurities instead and, and the way that we feel about ourselves, which is, which is very different. I thought the writing in that was really, really stunning. And then finally, the last story that I read was Emo McBride's story in Hag, which was called um, The Tale of Kathleen. The narrator in this story is really funny. She basically, I'm paraphrasing, but she says, there's this girl called Kathleen and I could tell you what she looked like but do you really care? I could tell you that she had this color eyes and this color hair, but I mean, I don't really know. Does anyone really know? It was so long ago. And then she talks about her husband who had died and she's like, well, I could tell you what he looked like, but do you care? Um, and she just gives lots of different examples of what people could have said or what they could have looked like. So basically a fairy is trying to tempt this woman, Kathleen, into the fairy realm to be reunited with her husband. And when the fairy disappears, the narrator said, and then three crows cried. And then she says, wait, did they though? Is that too melodramatic? Does that take you out of the story? Is that too much? <laughs> I just thought that was really, really funny. So it's playing around with, um, folklore elements, taking the mick out of it, but also, you know, loving it, paying homage to it. I enjoyed that. Out of the five that I read this time round, um, I wouldn't say that any of them were actually scary. I suppose this is, this is ghostly. Um, this one, I don't think is going to be particularly scary. I think it's just exploring secrets, as I said, so more unnerving I guess. Weird Women didn't scare me at all um, and I think my favourites uh, were these two, The Wilds and Flowers of Mould um, and I think these two plus, I'm just looking at the pile that I read earlier, You Will Never F Be Forgotten were my favourites. The one that probably scared me the most was Talk To Me but that is the collection that has the word horror in the title so that's probably not surprising. So those are my thoughts on the books that I have read, the parts of them that I've read so far. I would love to know if you have read any of these books, if you would like to, I will list them in the description box down below. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if you would like to purchase a copy of my short story collection, The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night, that would be really lovely. Thank you. Um, I hope you're all having a good start to the week and I'll speak to you very soon. Lots of love. Bye.